2016 relative to the donation of wireless devices and data service valued at $849,377 from the Los Angeles Police Foundation for the benefit of the Los Angeles Police Department. Good morning, Police Commission. Good morning. Commander Regina Scott, the Assistant Commanding Officer of Information Technology Bureau. And this um, donation is from Trent. It's an in kind, so there's no money from Trent for it. They're going to donate the phones. The phones are connected to our body worn camera system. It will allow the officers to be able to review their, their video. It will allow the officers to be able to be connected as far as um, we're going to do a connected officer where we'll be able to create apps for the officers to give them some resources at their fingertips. We'll be able to um, have them leverage some of the crime trends that are happening. It'll allow them to do FIs um, automated so they go directly in the system. It'll also allow them to do stop data um, so that they'll be able to put their information in if they're stopped. It provides us for the phones. It also gives us the ability to manage the devices um, remotely, and it will also um, pay for the uh, the data for one year. Sprint. Sprint. Sprint.
Supervisor Ed Edelman, uh, who passed. Uh, Mr. Edelman uh, served as a civilian member on boards of rights uh, for many years. Um, and we, uh, and we, uh, in the times uh, during the 90s, when we, when the, we had three or four times the amount of boards of rights that we do now, uh, Mr. Edelman uh, and I were uh, partnered on, on multiple uh, multiple different inquiries, boards of rights. And I always found him to be a a very reasonable man who had a huge impact uh, on the city and the council. Um, I Obviously, uh, above and beyond, uh, you know, the, I think uh, President Johnson uh, expressed my feelings about the above and beyond already. I, the only thing I would like to add is that that was the best attended uh, Medal of Valor uh, ceremony uh, that uh, the police department's ever had. So we had almost a thousand people in attendance. Um, it was a, a great way to recognize uh, some true heroes that, uh, that, that put their own safety at, at risk for others. And, and he, whether they got the, uh, the, the Medal, uh, Medal of Valor or the uh, Preservation of Life Medal or the Purple Heart, uh, all of them uh, were heroic in their actions and, and, and made a difference in, in other people's lives. Uh, I'd also like to, uh, to mention that we'll be reopening the uh, Park Police Academy uh, this week. Uh, that's, a, that's a great milestone uh, in, uh, in the history of Los Angeles Police Department. It will not only be available for, for graduations and other events, but also, uh, once again, uh, become the heart of uh, the department's uh, in-service training efforts and a place where uh, recruit officers begin and end their time in the, in the police academy. Uh, last, uh, before I get into general crime stats, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about the month of August. Uh, last year, uh, August was the, uh, the deadliest month in, in, in multiple years in the, in the history of Los Angeles. Uh, this August, uh, the city was considerably safer. Well, not as safe as we would like, of course, but considerably safer. We had uh, uh, almost a 20% reduction in homicides versus the, uh, the previous August. 21% uh, reduction in numbers of victims shot uh, relative to the uh, previous August. And, and I wanted to not only recognize that as a, uh, a positive point for the city, but also for the department, uh, the Office of Operations and, and, uh, and the other offices uh, had, a, had a good plan, stuck to their plan, uh, and uh, through the use of CSOC and making sure that, that uh, we had appropriate resources in the right places, they were able to make sure that we didn't have an August that repeated um, our last August. General crime stats. Um, <clears throat> and these are as of uh, the 10th of this month. Uh, homicides are, are down 2.9% as compared to last year. Uh, rapes are down 6.5%. Robberies are at a 12.6% uh, increase. And aggravated assaults are a 14.7% increase. That gives us a total violent crime picture of 12.1% uh, increase. Uh, although uh, we haven't gone in the right direction on that for the for the past uh, uh, number of weeks, and we're sort of chipping away at that number, so yeah. that's a positive thing. Uh, property crime burglaries, uh, residential burglaries in particular, are down 4.4%. Motor vehicle thefts are following a uh, <laughs> statewide trend of increase, a 15.7 percent increase. Uh, particularly in the last month, we've seen an increase in burglary theft from vehicles, vehicle break-ins, and we're seeing about a 9.3 percent increase there. And general thefts, personal thefts, are down 1.9 percent. This is a profit crime picture uh, of an increase over last year of 4.1 percent, and that gives us a total of <coughs> one crime picture of control combined violent and property mm -hmm. crime uh, increase of 5.8 percent. The shooting victims a very important uh, statistic because the department uh, has concentrated on, on reducing the number of shooting victims and the number of homicides over this, uh, over this summer. We had a 3.3 percent reduction in shooting victims from, uh, from last year. Uh, officer involved shootings uh, are down 5.1 uh, percent over the four-year average. How about the three kids that LAPD killed in August? <laughs> 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 How about the three kids that LAPD killed in August? 
about that. Aggravated crime, down 11.6% in homicide, and up 4.0% in total uh, gang-related crime. The gang, only <coughs> gangs I know are, the, are in blue. Jesse <laughs> 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 Romero with 14. Excuse me, can you please keep, uh, if you have a comment, can you submit a comment card? <laughs> I already figured Richard Reister with 18. Kenny Watkins with 18. What about the three kids <laughs> that LAPD killed? Ma'am, ma you're interrupting. Okay. Next morning, I'm going to ask Okay. Oh, I think he's only giving one warning. Traffic collisions are up 8.5% in the uh, city of Los Angeles. To give you an idea of the volume, it's a 37,000 uh, uh, traffic accidents so far to date that are reportable. Uh, At least went through the job. Driving and influence traffic accidents are down 2.6%. Uh, hit and runs are up 5.1%. Motor vehicle versus pedestrians are down 3.3%. Uh, uh, particular concern, though, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the fatal category of motor vehicle versus pedestrian, uh, you have suffered uh, 27 more fatalities this year than last. cities as, as it relates to um, jaywalking enforcement and pedestrian and roadway enforcement, but, but this is why we do it, because these are such um, horrific accidents that, that cost so many lives. Okay. Bicycle and block collisions uh, are down 18.2%, and they're actually down in the fatal category and in the series into category two, which is really <coughs> important because, you know, as you are well aware, we've seen a, a tremendous increase in bicycle uh, use in the city of Los Angeles. So that's a positive thing I think it shows what the Department of Transportation uh, has done with, uh, with bike lanes. Personnel uh, statistics, um, we have uh, 9,811 sworn personnel on payroll, uh, 2,748 civilian personnel assigned to Los Angeles Police Department, that's 529 vacant civilian positions. Uh, so we, we still suffer from civilian vacancies. We have about 425 uh, reserve officers, 284 specialist volunteers, 58 chaplains, and just shy of seven, excuse me, just shy of 8,000 uh, young people in our cadet program, which of course we are very proud of. And that concludes my report. Thank you. While you were your officers are disturbing the meeting. I report that one relates to um, the Israel board matter. Can we stop this? Can we stop the harassment first? Yeah. And then continue the meeting? To protect and serve? Yeah, that makes me laugh. Who's the meeting here? Protecting and serving of themselves. Yeah, well, can't you make at least go up in the up there? there are, I see a bell the hell out of here in the public room. Excuse me, right, but there's well, people locked out and not being told there's no more seats. But there, there are, are seats in there the are police people, room. There are so officers who will be coming in, in, in their row, and then the public will be asking you to please. Well, why don't you make your pigs go up front? Yeah, this is open. People are coming in and out of the meeting. So just like we had to go around the back of the building. Right, the black organizers have to go around the back of the building on Tuesdays only for police commission meetings. As we think about what's happening here, that the police can sit in our rows. Does this remind you of anything? Sit in the back of the bus. Yes, we got to sit in the back of the bus. Sit yes, in the back of the bus. Please move to one of the seats in the public room. There are seats available. 2016. 2016. Sit in the back of the bus. Yes. Exactly. In a public I meeting. In the public yes. room. First, you need to tell them first. If they'll come sit in their rows. I'm happy to sit in the, the back of the bus if my role is reserved for me. 
because those people locked outside told that they can't come in. That's you recall door. Jim Crow. He's, he's as long as there's no emergency. That is some bullshit. Yeah. Jim Crow. He's moved so we do not have to take a recess and, and shut the, delay everybody here. Jim Crow. We know you like to get out of here early. We got all day. <laughs> 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 no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Jim well, the, Crow. The problem is your your actions are going to cause a lot of other people to not She's sitting down. She was sitting in line of her own business. Jim Crow. The East would have started. Not, this is not a debate. So are the police moving to their roads? Yes, yeah. yeah, so we... Then I'll be in my roads. Let's have our roads. Boy, should we be alive and well? Give one another. I'm sure you're not in the wrong... Get the women off the front seats there, folks. Jesus. <laughs> you know? Okay, let's bring the meeting back to work, please. Yeah. You a simple preface to a request. <laughs> um, while you were away on vacation, there were two matters that came up rather recently that I'd like to get some reports back from. Wish the hell they'd speak up. One involved is Ill Ford. Um, and a yes. member of the public inquired as to when some action on that matter might be taken. Um, and as you know, it's been um, over a year since this commission made its ruling with respect to the out of policy finding. So I would appreciate a report back on that. Um, Come on. And in addition to that, there was another member of the public who inquired on several occasions regarding the um, release of information concerning a uh, shooting in Watts. And um, I understand that the specific uh, information involves the name of I understand that that is another matter that um, rests with um, your decision making. And um, I do understand the sensitive nature of the release of that information, but I would also like a report back as to when we can expect those two items to be addressed. Um, I do understand that there is to be no discussion of those items today. They're not on the agenda. And the city attorney will determine what matters can be discussed in open session and what matters will need to be discussed in closed. But I do just want to put that on your Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Matt. She, she, she. Yes, sir. We have nine comic cards. First four. Prentice Jenkins, Jerry Dietrich, Jojo Smith, and Beth Kemp. Wow. Wow. Oh, my. Jenkins, was the first one here. Publisher City Life Newsletter, activist since 1991. I'd like to say good morning to the board. Good morning. 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 President Johnson, Vice President Soberall. Good to see you, Chief. Uh, that was an, a, an excellent example of de escalation. I'd like to uh, say that uh, I'm very honored at what uh, my colleague, Dr. Abdullah, did, and I'm honored at the de escalation of what the officers did. They moved. A year ago, it would have been a fight in here. That is to the credit of uh, Dr. Abdullah and the credit to uh, uh, President Johnson, Vice President Soberall, and the Chief, because that was de-escalation. That's what de-escalation is about. See, there would have been arrest in here a year ago, but the officers moved, and it's all over now. It took, what, all five minutes to finish it off. So it's one thing to talk about de-escalation. It's another thing to see it. Two weeks ago, they allowed the uh, they allowed us protesters to stay in here for another for another uh, 30 minutes. No one got arrested. A year ago, they would <coughs> de-escalation, folks. It's actually working. We may not see it, but it's actually working. So right. that is a credit to all of us out here, the activists out here. That's a credit to the board. That's a credit to you, Chief. I'm, I'm still one of your supporters, but. You, you do understand that I, just as uh, uh, Commissioner McLean Hill said, something's got to be done about those cops that killed Isel Ford. Yes. I still want that done. That's got to be done. 
de-escalation is, is, is important, and I'm, I'm willing to help here, Chief. I'm willing to grow up my sleeves and help, but you got to help also. You tell them to think of their brain, not their trigger finger. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jerry Dietrich, and I'm with Stop LAPD Fine Coalition. I want to talk about Chief Beck, who has three hundred thousand dollars annually for one of the most murderous police force in the nation. I feel that Chief Beck must go. The man has shown nothing but contempt for the people of LA. He has also shown nothing but contempt for the nation. His repeated inaction in response to the request of the people is nothing compared to the inaction he has displayed to this city. <coughs> Many times I've witnessed the commission asking Beck for something and he has never complied. I've narrowed my speech down to three main points because. The three main areas that show Beck needs to go, even though I could list dozens. Number one, eight officers of the LAPD opened a fire on a pair of Latina women driving a blue Toyota truck because they thought it was Christopher Jordan, a black man driving a gray Nissan truck. 100 shots were fired, and the city of LA had to pay the women $4.2 million for the Next, in the case of Officer Sean Hillman, the disciplinary board recommended he be fired for lack of integrity in the incident in which he pulled a gun and uttered racial slurs, according to a video. video. But Beck merely handed the man 65 days suspension for his buddies with his dad, a former LAPD officer, and his uncle, a former LAPD deputy chief. Lastly, the fiancé was sabotaging a video camera on police vehicles. As I'm sure you remember, the consent decree was lifted in part because of all the improvements made by the LAPD. One such improvement was the installation of the cameras on police vehicles. Eighty of the cars in South LA had their cameras made inoperable. Beck found out about this problem in early July. He told Sobrov, then president, in September. The entire commission didn't find out until February. To me, this shows the contempt Chief Beck has for this body. Even though he rolls through the eyes and ears of the community to keep the LAPD in line, he didn't see fit to inform you of the crisis. I'd like to end with Beck's own words to this commission. Quote, if I ever become a detriment to this department because of my personality, because of something I did, then I'm gone. Unquote. See Please you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Jojo Smith, Los Angeles Community Action Network. Chief Beck talks about stats, but he didn't tell you about the stats that LA leads the nations in unarmed killings. <clears throat> unarmed killings. He's L Ford. You know, y'all found it in policy that they were out of policy. And then still there's nothing happening. Sister, thank you for bringing that up. But nothing's going to ever happen because Chief Beck says, I don't want to break my men's morale. <laughs> oh, give me a break. What about the people's morale? Yeah. Chief Beck, you're a piece of shit. You need to go. And to this board, stop rubber stamping all their bullshit. Oh. Run that shit. That's Ken followed by the Red Chief and Michael Williams. Good morning. Uh, good morning. I'd like to start by saying fire Chief Beck. Chief Beck has been the police, you know, the chief of police here for quite a while now, and we have not seen any improvement in the way these officers act. In the past month, three teenagers were killed. When Jesse Romero was killed, he was called a gang member, a 20-year-old gang member by your cops. He was 14 years old. I'm curious to know what happens to the guns in these buyback programs. Are you using them to plant on suspects? Suspects, as you call them. You know, and it seems like after somebody is murdered, the investigation stops. Yes, I know there's an internal investigation, but people don't hear about it. People don't know what really happened. You say Riddell Jones was running away with a knife. Well, let's see the knife. Let's, you know, have a full investigation as to what happened. Did she really rob a store? We shall never know. You know, and this is the problem. The police commission needs to get to the bottom of these things. They need to hold the officers accountable. As I stated two weeks ago, section 137 of the California State Civil Code says that you can. You can hold these cops accountable. You can remove them from office and you can take away their entire year's pay. And I think that's what needs to happen. And this pay starts to, needs to go to the families who are losing their homes, who are losing everything, their jobs, their state of mind, their peace, because they don't have anything. And you want to talk about, oh, well, you know, care about the family. Families, the families, you know, fuck you guys and your your idea of what family is, because your family is killing our family. Your family is killing the community and getting away with it. I believe that any officer who kills anyone in the line of duty should be held to the same regard. Any person here in this audience or in this city should be held. They should be 
Con they should be charged with murder. They should have their weapons taken away. They should no longer be on the streets. And it is unfair that they continue to roam the streets, kill people, harass people, and then their entire, uh, and, and everything they've done is taken off of their books. That's not fair. We're judged by what we do. They should be judged by what they do. Yeah. If you're interested in, in reading um, information on the officer involved shooting the categorical use of the force, after they are adjudicated by the Board of Police Commissioners, uh, the Chief's report is available in the room right next door, the Police Commission office. Wow, they're all live. Public, uh, public information. You should guys to learn to speak out. up. Wait, wait, the wait. Inspector General. Jesus Christ! Is available online, a bunch of whispers. Uh, within 24 hours, uh, Mr. Bustamante of the. It's incredibly hidden. How 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 long before your report is published? On it's generally within a day or two. The, the high profile incidents we try to another whisper online. Uh, Fuck you, Steve! Generally, we'll have uh, <laughs> some of the, the, the facts, the case, and then the commission's uh, rationale on its own. So that, that information is, is also available. And uh, I'd like to point out that within the constraints of California law, there's no other department in the state of California that is as forthcoming as we are with information. Huh. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why the damage that's division, they're more said. forthcoming than you guys that's are. Not, that's nothing to brag about. Jesus. Uh, you guys are nothing but idiots. You roam around paranoid with gun. Cops carrying guns, shooting everybody. First of all, Jesus. I call for the warning commission to do it. You idiots is what you are. I don't see LAPD really investigating themselves. Say it again. No, no consequences should LAPD be investigating themselves. The jig is just about us, Matt Johnson, and Chief Beck. On November 10th, I was arrested, and we do have pictures from the Um and then on January 15th, I was arrested for wearing my garb again over in City Hall, approximately at 9.40. You know what the city said about that, and you know what the federal judge said about that. You got to pay double amount. But the paperwork, the legal ease is getting ready to go in. So, Matt Johnson, I want you to expect that I'm naming you as a defendant and Chief Beck as well. Chief Beck for the January 15th incident over at City Hall, and you for. Uh, uh, residing meeting out on November 10th when you should have just really took the um, people that was making the disturbance out of the street. That's what the Brown Act says. Um, it's not a game no more. It, it, it's, it's, it's been happening. The way you run this meeting is unconstitutional. Say it again. Everybody has the right to assemble whether it's the front seat or the back seat. Right. Um, you guys have failed to do that. I'm going to have a federal judge tell you guys that it's, that it's really okay for them to reside in the front, back seat, or wherever, wherever there's a seat available. You guys have been holding up these meetings. You guys have just done everything. You know I have the legal ease for that. You know I sued not only Parks and Recreation, but Steve Rody sued uh, uh, LA City Hall as well. I'm not joking anymore. I do have the legal ease, and it, it, it's not funny when you have to sit down and do depositions with me on this, and it's not a joke. No more. Paperwork will be done next week. Chief Beck was named 